Along the grid diagonals, I get 2.997801E8. So this is a lot closer to the speed of light than what we got along the axes, which was 2.991574E8. And here's the c speed of light, 2.9979-2456E8. So what this means, what we're getting is numerical anisotropy, where the wave propagates at slightly different speeds in different directions in the grid. So if we have our grid, if I'm going to exaggerate this, we have our source in the middle. Say that this is a perfect circle then what we get is the wa wave speed is closer to the speed of light along the diagonals. So we're going to be really close here along the diagonals, but we're going to be a little bit slower along the axes. So it'll kind of look like this. Note that this is different from material anisotropy, which is physical. Uh, the material can cause anisotropy, anisotropic wave propagation, and that can also lead to different propagation characteristics in different directions within a material. That kind of anisotropy is physical, and it is caused by the material that the wave is propagating through. What we have here is numerical phase, numerical anisotropy and it does not exist in real life. It's a result of the discretized grid that we are using. Now typically for most applications we don't need to be concerned about this slight amount of numerical anisotropy, but it is good to be aware of it for scenarios where high accuracy is needed. Next time we're going to start adapting this two-dimensional FDTD model to the design challenge, but that's it for today.